All right, hey, so this is after the rebuild and triple test, and I think I figured out everything. Uh, there's some very important notes here that you're going to have to um, take into account when you're rebuilding your GMC Chevy Dash. Now, this is a 2004 Yukon XL uh, GMC, and like you wonder what's inside Stretch Armstrong. Well, this is what's inside the Dash. Um, you have to pop these clips out, and there's there's a number of things. It's four seven millimeter bolts. It took a whole uh, 45 seconds to remove the cluster. You got to put the uh, car in, uh, turn the key on, put the gear shifter all the way down to uh, like first gear, and then um, tilt the steering wheel down. Now there's there's just clips that pop off that hold the uh, fascia thing over top of here, and then you'll see these four bolts. Uh, here, 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 seven millimeter. This is post rebuild. And uh, I have also swapped out all of the little bulbs for LED. It came with these little LED things, look like Christmas lights in the kit. Uh, it's kind of bogus on some of them because when they put it together, they kind of glue this. Here's what's inside of this thing, this thing right here. Is kind of glued into the bulb and so what I found best was to just take scissors and just snip off the end here's one where it's the full length but so what I did is I just snipped off the end because you, you're gonna clip it down anyhow so you snip off the end now that the thing is is if you could pull it out I had a couple of them where it snapped off and uh, I, did, I was able to solder all the uh, wires back on if they snapped off. But notice there's a diode on one side, and one side there isn't. So this is very important when you're putting it back together. And please respond with comments if yours works differently. But, okay, so here is, this is face up, all right? So on this light, the diode on the bottom right, the diode is on the top connection. On the, on the end two, the diodes are on the top. On the inside two, the diodes attach to the bottom. There's four, you'll notice there's four little spots there. The way I, the way I did it was I just took the uh, soldering iron and just started pressing just um, basically, I was. See if I can get this right here. Okay, so here's one on the board right here. What I would do is take the hot soldering iron and just be pressing on the bulb with my finger and just touch it and then go out like that and then just touch it again and the bulb would come out and they're like surface mount so you're gonna and then what I would do is just dab a little bit of uh, solder take a little bit of solder and build up a, a tiny little bulb not much and then pull after I, I clip it down about that big then I'd walk the things apart you gotta make sure that they're not touching but then just basically you just heat the solder up enough to, to flow it in and then, um, hey, the I know, hey Matt, hey, I'm recording video. Um, but, uh, yeah, as far as, uh, okay, so now on, on the speedometer lights, okay, on the left side, the diode's on the bottom. On the right side of the speedometer, the diode is on the top. Now on the tack, on the top of the tack, the diode's on the right side. The bottom of the tack, it's on the bottom. Do not replace these two bulbs. These are your turn signal indicators. They will not work with the um, with LED. So LED uh, will not work. I replaced it, and both of them wouldn't work. So I had to resolder these back on. Um, and it, it was all good after that. I also didn't replace this one. I don't see any reason to have my uh, seatbelt light or whatever coming on super bright. It's just annoying. Um, 
anyhow, now, as far as the replacement kit goes, um, people are using this thing. Honestly, I wouldn't waste my money. Uh, get desoldering wire. It's this jazz right here. And there's a trick to the trade. You want to get a pair of scissors. And you notice how I got all these little ends cut off? Basically, what you're going to do is you're just going to heat up, take the solder and heat up the solder till it's melting and, and just able to flow. And then just come in and touch this in. Touch this in and it'll soak into the end. And just keep on clipping off just like, I'm talking like a quarter inch at a time. This, this little roll would last forever. Um, you want to have it soaking into the end of this, not the sides. That's the trick. Now, when you when you rec uh, take these out, I'm sorry, I'm not going to show you the bottom side of it, but um, you'll use you know you'll take the uh, what I did was I flowed out, I sucked up the solder with this stuff, just real gently. You only do three seconds on the board at a time. Don't get very crazy with that. You can hurt yourself, hurt the hurt the uh, unit. But you want to there's these little tabs right here and what I did is after I sucked the solder out you'll see that the well will get dry around where the board just goes through the board and then so what you do is just I just took the tip of the soldering iron and just flicked it and then it would kind of break it loose you got to be careful don't touch anything else when you're doing that you want to definitely get magnifying glass like this to do your work especially when you start off if you're an old man like me then you need that but so you remove all these now listen to this sounds like a rattle all these rattle those are bad the new ones there's no rattling none and what's on the inside of these things just a bunch of little plastic gears uh, mine started going out around 145, 150,000 miles. It's no wonder. Hitting bumps constantly. And you see how small, you see how, how fine the, uh, the mesh is on that. It's no wonder they wear out. So, that's it. Good luck. And uh, post any uh, changes or additions. But uh, that should be all the tricks to the trade to get this thing, get it rolling for you. So, good luck. Over and out.